Hello, my name is Lisa Great, and I am the president and founder of the Apostolic Resource Center. Thank you so much for joining this video podcast today. I hope you enjoy the word that the Lord has for us. The title of this message is called The Power of the Gospel. Now, you may say, well, we already understand that the gospel has power, and I understood that too. I've been a Christian for 30 years. I don't know how long you've been a Christian, but after being a Christian for 30 years, we kind of get this sense that we know the stories in the Bible and we kind of know what the story's about and what God is saying through the story. But this week and last week, I've been reading through the book of Acts. And as I've been reading through it, the Lord spoke to me and said, you want to know how the church started, was established and maintained? Read the book of Acts. Read it slowly and pay attention to details. And so I have been doing that for the past couple of weeks, just slowly, methodically, gently listening, pondering, reading the book of Acts. And I have found some jewels that I thought I knew, but actually I didn't know. Because you see, the word of God is layered. You can read it on the surface and it'll say one thing. And then the more you get to know the word of God, the more you get to know the nature and the heart of God, the more you get to know the ways of God, the word of God opens up in in dimensions and directions and ways that you would have never dreamed of. But I'm telling you, the more you read the word of God and the more you're tapping into what God is trying to say in his word, you will find that there are um, portals, there are, there are mines that you can just dig deep in and find something that you never saw before. And that's what happened to me this week. I'm, I'm now in Acts chapter 19, and this is where Paul, he's been on multiple missionary journeys, gone to many countries around the Mediterranean Sea area, and he ends up in the city of Ephesus. And while he's in Ephesus, there's a lot of things going on there. And, and there's many more things I could share with you, but I just want to highlight one thing in, the, in Acts 19 that the Lord showed me. And it's related to the story of when Paul was in Ephesus and there was a slave girl that was following him and his um, companions around. And she was declaring, these men proclaim to you the way. These men are sharing with you the gospel. And, and it, it sounds like maybe it was in a taunting, mocking way because the Bible says that she had an evil spirit and that she brought her masters a lot of money uh, for the temple Artemis and that uh, these masters were actually um, profiting greatly off of this temple in Ephesus called the temple of Artemis, which was a Greek goddess I'll tell you about in just a little bit here. But I want to read to you what happened when Paul turned around. So he, the Bible says that he got annoyed and he turned around and he cast the demon out of this girl and then word got back to the master of this girl And this is what this guy said. His name is Demetrius. We're in Acts 19, verse 24. It says, For a man named Demetrius, a silversmith who made silver shrines of Artemis, was bringing no little business to the craftsmen. That means he was really profitable in making these silver shrines that he would sell little trinkets at the temple for the visitors that would come. These he gathered together with the workmen of similar trades and said, Men, you know that our prosperity depends upon this business, meaning selling temple shrines. You see and hear that not only in Ephesus, but almost in all of Asia, this Paul has persuaded and turned away a considerable number of people saying that the gods made with hands are no gods at all. You see, Paul was going around Asia and all the different areas, and he was preaching in the synagogues, and there were God-fearing Greeks in the synagogues as well as Jews, and they believed in Moses, and that wasn't a threat. To believe in Moses and to be a Jew was not a threat to any of the um, Asian world or any of the other world. But the minute he started preaching Jesus Christ of Nazareth, not only born of a virgin Mary, um, walked as a man on the earth, did signs, wonders, and miracles, died on a cross, was dead and buried and rose again. That gospel has power. And these people knew it. So that gospel that cast out the demon from the girl caused an issue for these men that were trying to make money off of the temple Artemis, which obviously was powerless. Otherwise, that slave girl wouldn't have had a demon. Moving on. (laughs) It says, you see in here that not only in Ephesus, but also in all of Asia, this Paul has persuaded and turned away a considerable number of people saying that gods made with hands, which they knew that's what they were because they made them, are no gods at all. 
Not only is there danger that this trade of ours fall into disrepute, but also that the temple of the great goddess Artemis he regarded as be regarded as worthless, and that she whom all of Asia and the world worship will even be dethroned from her magnificence. Oh my goodness. The temple of Artemis. Maybe you've heard of it, maybe you haven't. The Roman name was the temple of Diana. So Artemis was the Greek name. Diana was her Roman name. And, and this is a goddess who was uh, considered the goddess of the hunt. She was a goddess of fertility. And she was also a protector of all girls up until the age of 13 when they were married. So this goddess was worshipped all over the world and predominantly in Asia. And here her temple was. This temple was so magnificent. It was the fourth of one of the seven wonders of the world. This temple is known as one of the seven wonders of the world. The fourth fourth wonder of the seven wonders of the world. This temple was magnificent. The, The historians say that this temple was four times the size of the Parthenon in Athens, Greece. And and so this temple was significantly large. It was made with marble pillars that made it look like a forest because she was a huntress and she kind of hung out, according to the mythology, she would hang out in the woods. And so they made her temple look like a forest. And and she she was just a powerful goddess in the eyes of the people that worshipped her. And so here comes Paul with the gospel of Jesus Christ. The, the man who was prophesied about, who came to earth, who, who was crucified, died, was buried, and rose from the dead. And he's, and, and he's telling people about this living God that, 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 is, that is well known in, in Jerusalem and the people that are getting saved and how he was sent as an apostle to preach this gospel. People are getting converted and, and they're throwing in their magic books and, and their spell books and all these things that they practice. And, and the Bible says that the, the, the price of the books that they burned at this one event in Ephesus actually cost 50,000 pieces of silver. 50,000 pieces of silver, that's a lot of money. And so here people are getting converted. And when you converted to Christianity, they would turn away from the Temple Artemis this magnificent temple. And so this threw the whole city into an uproar because their trade was being affected. You know, you mess with people's money, you're messing with their God. And so whether they believed that she really had any power or not didn't matter. What had power to them was the money they were making off of her and making little temple shrines where people could take them to their house. So this caused a great disturbance. But see, what what I didn't know and what is so fascinating to me is that this was the third temple of Artemis. The first one they built was flooded and it was destroyed by a flood. The second one they built was destroyed by fire. And here comes the third one. And Paul comes preaching the gospel of the kingdom. And guess what happened? That third temple ended up being destroyed 20 years after Paul preached the gospel of the king, the gospel of salvation in that place the gospel of the kingdom of Jesus Christ. And you know what else? Even though it was the fourth of the seven wonders of the world, that temple was never rebuilt. You know why? Historians say because Christianity grew at such a magnitude because of the preaching of Paul. You see, he taught in the school of Tyrannius for two years there in Ephesus, raising up disciples, teaching them the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then everybody would go and share what they learned, and that's how the gospel would spread. There were so many Christians in Ephesus that when that temple was destroyed 20 years later, they never could get the funding to rebuild it. Because so many people had turned away from worshiping idols and had remained faithful to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Can I tell you something? The gospel of Jesus Christ has the power to not only destroy idols of temples, but to cause them to never be rebuilt again. Did you hear me? It has the power not only to destroy temple and idol worship, but it has the ability to cause that temple to never be rebuilt again. The temple of Artemis, the fourth of seven wonders of the world, has never been rebuilt. If you go to Ephesus today, what you're going to find is one pillar. 
and a few rock formations that were discovered in 1869. They did some excavations in that area. Never has that temple been rebuilt and never will it be rebuilt again because the gospel of the kingdom that Paul preached in Ephesus had the power to put that temple under the feet of Jesus Christ. Never for it to rise again. I'm here to remind you today that the gospel of Jesus Christ that you believe in, that you said yes to whenever you were born again, no matter if it was like me 30 years ago or for maybe for some of you it was three days, three weeks, three months, three years ago. It does not matter. That gospel has the power to put anything in your life that's causing you to be away from God. It has the power to put that under your feet. It has the power to put addictions under your feet and never allow them to rise again. It has the power to put sickness and disease under your feet and have it never rise again because it's under the feet of Jesus. It's under the blood of Jesus. The gospel has that much power. The power to transform the way you think. The power to activate um, new thought processes. The power to stand and believe that Jesus Christ is able to do anything. Because his name is where the power lies. And Paul knew it. It wasn't the gospel of Paul that he preached. It was the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it didn't have the power to tolerate sin. Paul didn't go in and say, it's okay that you're idol worshipers. You can still go to the temple of Artemis. He said, no, turn away from those man-made idols and follow the living God. And they did. And so did I. And so did some of you. But I want you to know that that gospel that caused you to turn away when you first got saved is the same gospel that has the power to keep you turned away from those things. I could tell you all kinds of things that used to be in my life that God has removed and they've never been able to resurrect again because the gospel has the power to keep them under the feet of Jesus. I'm here to tell you whatever you're struggling with, the gospel has the power to put it under Jesus' feet and never have it rise again in your life. It may feel like a wonder, like one of the most magnificent, the most magnificent things. This was one of the seven wonders of the world that the gospel took out never to rise again. I'm telling you, the gospel hasn't lost its power. And it, all it takes is faith in the word of God for these things to become a reality in your life. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved from that situation. All you have to do is believe on him. Call upon him. He is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and he's your God and he's my God. And he is able, whatever it is that you need to put under your feet, whatever it is that's nagging you, um, nitpicking you, attacking you, the gospel has the power. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. I'm telling you, we are about to see the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ manifest all over the earth again. Just like it did when Paul went on his missionary journeys. Whether you go from city to city, region to region, state to state, or country to country. Wherever you go and you preach this man, Jesus Christ, his name still has the same power. And it's going to still do the same miracles. And it's going to still work the same healings. And it's still going to manifest the same ability to put the temples of idols under the feet of Jesus never to rise again. I'm telling you, the power of the gospel has not changed. And I sense in the spirit that there is a ramping up, a ramping up a ramping up of those that are believing in the gospel of Jesus Christ in a fresh way. They're not hanging on to old thought patterns. They're not hanging on to old controlling manipulative power structures. They're not hanging on to those things anymore. They're letting go and the power of the gospel is coming alive in them again. People that are like in the valley of dry bones, they were like an army that once used to run and walk in cadence with the Lord. And for whatever reason, they got taken out. I see them rising again. We prophesy to those dry bones. Come alive. Come alive in the name of Jesus. I see God doing miracles, signs and wonders again, not because we have power in our hands, but because his word has the power to heal the sick, raise the dead, and cast out the demons. 
I'm telling you, he's reigniting revivalists for such a time as this. If you feel a stirring in your spirit, I want to speak to you and let you know you have not been taken out of the game. You have not um, been taken out of the race. You may have been sidelined. You may have felt like you've fallen down and you can't get back up. But I'm here to tell you, the gospel of Jesus Christ has the power to raise the dead. It can raise whatever is dead in you. Those giftings, those callings, those thoughts, those ideas, those dreams that you think are dead, I decree life. I, whew, I speak life into those dreams. I prophesy to those dry bones. And I say, breath of wind, blow! Blow! on those dry bones, and let them come alive again. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a new day. And Yahweh is going to have his way in the nations of the world again. And the gospel of Jesus Christ is going to put temples down that are made by man and lack power. And he's going to raise up the gospel of Jesus Christ and the ecclesia, the called out ones, are going to govern the earth with the gospel of the kingdom. And everything's about to come alive. (laughs) It's such a great day to be alive. I hope you were encouraged by this broadcast. I hope the word of God comes alive in you with power and authority. And I just want to remind you, the Lord Jesus Christ, that name never loses power. If all you can do is whisper his name, do that. But ask him for help. In whatever situation you're finding yourself, ask him for help and let him make you an overcomer and get this word inside of you. Get it in you. It's got the power to not only deliver you and set you free, it's got the power to reactivate you with fresh revelation for this new location that he's sending you in the spirit. Be blessed, my friends. We are going to see the gospel of the kingdom in a manifest way again on the earth in our generation. From the oldest person in our generation to the youngest, this is going to be a multi-generational move of God. Get ready. Everybody's needed. May the Lord bless you. My name is Lisa Great. I'm the president and founder of the Apostolic Resource Center. If you'd like to partner with this ministry, you can go to www.apostolicresourcecenter. That's one word, apostolicresourcecenter.org. Click the donate button and become a one-time giver or a monthly giver. And know that God is on the move multi-generationally. Have a great day.